Hola. I am Zoro. Hola. <laughs> Just kidding, I thought, I've been working on a Zoro cosplay, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to bring it out in a little bit. Um, including kind of a weird thing, I don't know what this is, as a sword. But anyway, the real reason I wanted to do a video today, um, I've been watching through the Guy Williams Zoro show, I'm on a really big Zoro kick right now. And so I thought I'd I'd make a quick video, just a vlog, about some thoughts I've been having about that. Um, so for those that don't know, the Guy Williams Zoro Show is a series produced by Disney, that Disney, yes, um, in the late 50s, starring Guy Williams and uh, a number of other actors uh, that just, like, there are tons of episodes of. Um, there are only three seasons, but the first two seasons had 40 episodes almost, uh, 39 episodes each. Um, and then the third season I haven't gotten to yet, but I'm about halfway through the second season, which is about two-thirds through the series, and there's just been a couple of things about it that I wanted to, like, get out there, get off my chest, um, and just talk about a little bit, because I've, I've had some thoughts on it, and I, I did a rant on Twitter the other day, and that's always good, good things to mine for a video. Um, so anyway, one of the things that, like, really inspired me to, to really get on there about this show is I love parts of this show. Some of it is just so brilliant, and it's it's so much fun to watch. It is all around enjoyable. There's some great musical numbers here and there. Um, it's, it's a great, great series. Um, but I was watching an episode last night, which is called The Runaways, and it was horrible. Not in, like, a structural sense. That's the thing that gets me. It's, like, objectively, if you're not putting any morals into it at all, it's a really good uh, episode, all things considered, as uh, it tells a quick, concise story, it's emotionally satisfying, it's well-structured, everything about it works. But the episode itself is about two slaves. Um, so Zorro's, of course, set in Spanish California in the early 19th century, and the Spanish had a lot of crazy rules uh, that, that were obviously morally reprehensible. And one of the systems that they had involved, that they had um, on the books was the idea of indentured servitude. And this isn't like a Spanish thing only. This goes throughout the history of, of Europe big time and throughout most history. Um, but they have indentured servitude, which is that someone could finance your schooling and then they were obligated to work for you. They were indentured to be your servant for X amount of time, whatever the contract was. And immediately, red flag already, Diego, Zorro for this, no, Diego owns one of these people. That's already a problem. But two slaves want to get married, and they need permission from their owners. And Diego grants his slave permission without any, like, fuss about it or anything. She comes and asks him, he just gives her a letter saying, yeah, of course you have my permission. And another slave owner doesn't, and, and that's the whole, like, and that's the thing that's driving the, the drama in the episode. And it's not that the drama isn't well handled and everything, but at one point, one of the slaves, the male slave who, who didn't get permission from his owner, comes to Diego after he's run away. He's an escaped slave. And Diego tells him that it's his duty as a man to go back to his master and and work it out and settle settle it like men. That just totally rubbed me the wrong way. Context, of course, is, is everything. Context, this was made in the 50s. Context, this was a regular practice throughout history. There, there's You can throw all the context you want at this, and it certainly mitigates it in a lot of ways. It's not like Star Trek, where my problem with that series is all the um, the the hypocrisy in the original series of, of, you know, lecturing to us about how to be better people, but at the same time, clearly you're not following that in your own show. Um, so we, we get this, this sense of... And, and so Zorro... Is, is somewhat still guilty of that, but end of the day, Zorro in that series wants people to follow the law, and he expects the same level of following the law from the people as he does from the government officials. But what he doesn't realize, and what I don't think the writers ever really caught on to, 
is if you keep making the villains for Zoro these corrupt government officials, then the problem is no longer that the government is corrupt. The problem is that the government is fundamentally flawed and is taking advantage of people. And Zoro has always been a huge symbol of, of revolution and uprising. Um, if you go back to some of the one of the original uh, silent films and you watch the, the beginning of it, it opens with a quote that's something to the effect of, now that it's exactly, oppression by its very nature creates the force that will destroy it. And that's what Zoro is. Zoro is a very revolutionary figure. And, and Diego certainly has a role to fill in society to be able to avert suspicion from himself and everything. But at the same time, there are other ways to do that than him imploring a slave to return to his master, who clearly doesn't have his best interests at heart. And and what they, the episode tried to do was make Zoro into like a um, a good slave owner. And the only kind of good slave owner is someone who buys a slave to release them to freedom. Um, which did happen, a lot of Quakers did it. Um... So the idea that, that anyone can be a good slave owner, though, is out. By the act of owning slaves, you are a horrible person that owns fucking slaves. Um, and no matter how well you treat them, even if you treat them like people, they're still your property, and that's fucked up. Uh, so it's, it's really, really distressing to see Diego written that way. It doesn't affect the series. The series is still really good. It's a really just low point in that episode. And even though Zoro does, like, lecture a lot about, you know, being a good man and this, that, and the other thing, there's still the context of the time, both within the series and within when it was made and, and how it was made. Like, they're not trying to push society forward, they're just trying to teach a very basic, essential moral in that show. And it's in other things with Zoro that we get the revolutionary. That's not really the thing, and... and that's my biggest problem with the show, and I think this episode epitomizes it. Zoro is trying to fight for some kind of, trying to straddle this line of fighting for true justice and upholding, and having people respect and uphold the laws. Like, the entire first half of the second season takes place in Monterey, and there's a whole thing about a, um, a guy who's hiding out in the hills and uh, and striking against the uh, the soldiers and the the government because they've been mistreating the uh, the peons and like yeah that's a really strong revolutionary episode. But Zoro, instead of siding with him, implores him to settle things rationally, and responsibly. But he is also like saving the guy's neck and not bringing him in and everything. So it's this it's a fine line that that Zoro straddles in that show. But it becomes problematic, like I say, when he's constantly straddling, straddling this line, and he's never realizing that the system that of law that he's attempting to defend isn't just corrupt, it's broken. Um, or, or not broken, it was built to be filled with corruption and, and to oppress people. And so that's that's always been a problem for me, watching Zorro and, and seeing him, um, you know, deal strike deals with the government and stuff like that's certainly part of the role Diego's supposed to uphold but I don't like the way in which they have him uphold it and so it's really been bothering me it's the thing that's that's left me the most distaste from an otherwise amazing series that's a lot of fun to watch um if you haven't seen the Guy Williams show I still really do recommend watching it because it is really well done overall and the problems that I'm talking about are pretty under the surface. If you're just the kind of person that likes to just watch a good fucking story, watch the Guy Williams Zorro show. The first season's on YouTube, at least at the time of this recording. The first season is available on YouTube in the best quality you're going to get. They have some of the second season, but I quit watching um, the YouTube versions of all this stuff just because the audio starts to go, uh, starts to go out of sync, and that just becomes too distracting. But anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you all enjoyed Zoro lecturing to you about Zoro. Um, and I just... Oh, wait, hold on. I should talk really quickly. Um, so the way you in which you write Diego having to deal with being a, a you know, proper... A, a Don, that's what they call him. The way you write Don Diego having to fit in that society as a Don and still keep him as a good person 
since the Don would be expected to have indentured servants have slaves. The way you do that is you do either an Oscar Schindler thing, where he, yeah, he buys slaves, but that's just to protect them from otherwise horrible people. Um, and, and, you know, maybe he makes them do stuff, but that's just to uh, prevent, you know, suspicions from being aroused. Or you do like a, um, you have Diego play up that he's this socialite that no one could ever believe is Zorro by having him appear to be a racist. Um, like, if, if you're going to have Diego, like, refuse to get Indian slaves and instead hire people, like, from out of country, for example, then what you do is you have him go, oh, no, Indians are just completely worthless. They can't do any of the work properly. I learned that over in my time in Spain. The Indians are just the worst kind of people to have working for you. And that would potentially cause other problems, or it could solve things and, and, you know, create a social status in which it's fashionable to not have Indian slaves. Um, it's just one of those things I, I've been having some thoughts on, so I thought I would show off my cosplay in progress. I think it's looking okay. I mean, it's just a coat and some black, but it's the hat that really does it. And then I got the sword thingy, and I need a better mask. But anyway, everyone, anyway, everyone, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video, and hopefully it's not too distracting to hear Zoro lecture at you. Jesus, it's so heating hot in here. Ah, why do I always do this to myself? God, Diego, you're always doing this. Always getting yourself way too far deep into one thing. Foxes aren't even black. Think for like two seconds, man.